hate the rain. And you just showered. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'll <laughs> <laughs> oh, just shower. Every shower day. Then we get a squall. The good news is we're getting good speed. Yeah. Not necessarily in the right direction. We're getting towards the pirate guns. That's good. Towards the pirates. But... A real sailor chilling on the sails, <laughs> sleeping on the on the sail. Let's go. Cool. We're still running slowly underneath the coast of Nicaragua here, well offshore, keeping a pretty good lookout. Haven't seen too much yet though. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and silence our AIS. Okay, we're running dark. We're running dark tonight, which is the first time I've ever done that before. We have our AIS transponder shut off. We have our nav lights off on the masthead. Um, we have our radar reflector down, but that is a recommended guidance for passing these waters. The waters are about 150 miles off the coast of Nicaragua, here. It is the end of day four on Bill's offshore passage to Panama, leaving about 400 miles remaining. Bill and his crew, Brandon and Andre, have already transited over 500 miles and yesterday were surprised to pass another boat out here, way offshore. I'm in Panama City and though I've been working a lot, I did get out to explore and enjoy a beautifully sunny day walking around the city. Dinner's nice, made a little Capri salad. Got some baked beans going. And hot dogs, oh yeah. This is probably the highlight. But yeah, still fight this car. Speed of three knots, ugh. All right guys, so we're running dark tonight. So we're gonna have to scan the horizon a little harder today than we normally do, because we're not showing AIS and we're not showing nap lights, so it's up to us to avoid collisions. Under the radar. We're going under the radar, just for one night only just while we're off the Honduras and Nicaraguan border. I don't think it's gonna be too bad. This first commercial ship we've seen all day. Yeah, I think it should be fine. Yep. If it gets crazy, we'll flash, flat boat, put a light on, or we'll put the four deck light and light up the sails, but sure. better safe than sorry. This is a recommended guidance, what people say to do in this situation, so. Um, there was problem historically with uh, fishing boats and attacking sailboats. The recommended guidance is to run with no nav lights and no AIS transmitting, so that's what we're doing. Um, so watch keeping falls entirely on us. Usually people can see us and they get out of our way for sailing, but um, tonight we have to be actually vigilant. Our speed's picking up slowly. It's been a long slog against this Gulf Stream. Uh, you should see the map for the car, it's just insane in this area. Um, you can see our track has been zigzagging everywhere. We have all these weird turns and zigs and zags. That's all from the current messing up our heading. Um, but we're starting to come out of it a little bit, so hopefully the speeds will pick up overnight. Stand by. The types of incidents involving yacht piracy has historically involved fishermen, having fallen on hard times and become desperate. There are known incidents of these fishermen boarding yachts even over 100 miles offshore, far from the Nicaraguan coast. When preparing for this passage, we did research using several types of resources, including websites such as the Caribbean Safety and Security Net and Noonsight, a fantastic source of a large variety of information for cruisers across the globe, including check-in protocol, information on marinas and ports, plus reports from cruisers all over the world. It is on this site where the latest known report of piracy was shared. It occurred in April of 2019 
and describes a group of four fishing boats containing five to six men each who rammed the side of the yacht until they were able to board and then steal everything in sight on deck since they were unable to get down below where crew and captain were hiding. Prior to this incident, there were several reports over the years preceding 2019, which is why we've taken it seriously, staying well offshore and running dark. So Bill has about 450 miles to go or so. Um, and the last few days has been kind of up and down for me. It's been super fun and exciting to be in a new country. So that's been great. Um, I've been working mostly. I've gotten out a couple times and explored. And Panama seems like a cool city. So that aspect's cool. But I have had some lingering anxiety just, you know, with Bill being out at sea and just I think with all the change going on you know not doing the passage it's kind of weighed a lot on me like in and out and yeah out there on the ocean bill is actually running dark right now um the threat of piracy is a real thing so he has radar off and AIS off and yeah I think that's just you know you know adding to my anxiety um but it's been a good thing, I guess, to have work to keep me distracted. And again, I've been so behind since I didn't do anything the week of passage prep. Um, so yeah, it's been good, but I think I'm ready. I'm getting right closer to being like really ready for Bill to be back. And I just got an email from him and he said the same thing. He's kind of like, yeah, he wants to be done. So, um, but they have had a great passage so far and yeah, in reality, everything's great. Just uh, kind of get into my head sometimes. Um, and it really is just a big change for me <laughs> to not be on the boat. So yeah, but the rain has passed. The sun is trying to come out. Um, it's rainy season here in Panama. So, you know, we just get these like downpours and then the sun comes out. So it's still a little cloudy, but I'm gonna head out and yeah, enjoy the rest of the day because tomorrow I fly to Bogus. Take me anywhere that you want I don't even care if we come back again And as long as the stars are shining above us Then I just want to be with you on, eh, boys? Yep. Look at this. It's here. A little rough this morning. A little, yeah, a little rough this morning. Things are not as easy as the other few days. The life jackets on, tethered in. Still running off the coast of Nicaragua here. Um, wind has been up a little bit today in the 20s. Well, a little below 20 maybe. Um, we're still running dark off the coast, just be careful. 
Um, motion's pretty good. Just hanging on until we turn a little further south towards Panama in about 35 miles. Yeah, doing well. Two days left. While Calico Skies slices through the waves at sea, I say goodbye to Panama City and begin the trip to the Bocas del Toro Archipelago, 377 miles from here. I have to fly there out of a small regional airport, not the large international one that I arrived into five days ago now. It's a short plane ride, but the contrast between the city and this little group of islands in the Caribbean Sea is striking. It's going to be an adventure, and the excitement I feel at the prospect of arriving into a new and exotic location is good for my soul. Just got to my room in Bocas del Toro and I'm kind of losing my shit right now, losing my mind a little bit. Um, the cab ride here just was overwhelming. It was so beautiful. And this hotel that I'm staying in is incredible. It's like a little yurt. Um, there's this sweet little port light thing with a seat, um, port window, window seat thing. And um, yeah, it just, it looks even cooler than it, did online and I, yeah, the only reason I didn't come here sooner is because this hotel is more expensive than the one I stayed at in Panama City, but man, I wish I could have afforded to stay here longer because I already know it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> so I'll show you what the property looks like. I'm so excited. I can't believe Bill's gonna be here in like less than two days now. It's crazy.
mean, pretty cool, right? Wow. It's just so weird to have been in Panama City and then all of a sudden be in this jungle. I just hear so many insects and birds and oh, I'm excited. So we are on night two of Running Dark. Um, we are past the major part of the Nicaraguan bank, but we're just being careful. We're still running about 120, 130 miles off the coast of Nicaragua. Um, but it's kind of like sketchy. Like you can see here, we have a tanker coming. And they have no idea we're here right now. Like, we have no AIS, we have our radar reflector down, so we have to make sure that we avoid him. So we're gonna closely watch his closest point of approach with CPA. Um, which is right now 1.15 miles, 1.68, so that's fine. It's gonna happen in an hour, but we have to be very mindful, at least until we clear the coast and we could put all our transceivers back on and everything. Um, yeah, so it's kind of a scoop here tonight. We're sailing along nice though. We're finally out of the current. We're in the sixes. Uh, slightly behind the beam, the sea state is down. So yeah, it feels pretty good. We're about 360 miles of Panama, so another two and a half days or so. Getting there, we're finally like out of the crazy currents and not going up wind. So yeah, I feel like we're in the home stretch here, which is a good feeling because we'll show you the map. There's a whole lot of currents we had to deal with and a whole lot of wind and situations. So yeah, about to start night watches and start everyone's gonna go to bed soon. Join us next time for the conclusion to the tale of two passages. I get my first glimpses of incredible Bocas del Toro, while Bill and the crew get their first glimpses of the Panama coastline after almost seven days at sea. After a long week of separation, it's one epic reunion. <laughs>